Hey everyone, it's Leanne. Welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. Today in my art journal, I'm doing something a little bit different. So I've been playing Animal Crossing lately and I've decided to paint some of the Animal Crossing things in my game. This is a look at the fossil. So these are the little things in the ground that you can dig up and you take them to the museum and you get them checked out by Blathers, the resident owl, and he will tell you what dinosaur fossil or um, just fossil in general that you have and you try to complete your collection. I just love the art of these fossils. I really like the shapes of them and the rectilinear style of the art. And so I thought it would be fun to do one of these as a first entry into my watercolor journal. For this, I've decided to put down just kind of a an overlay base first. So that's what I'm doing here. I wet the entire fossil outside of the white areas. And I'm just dropping in a little bit of color here and there and emphasizing the shadows a little bit to create that base layer that I can paint onto once this layer dries and add a little bit more detail. So I thought with my watercolor journal, I would keep a little bit of a journal of all the different islanders that visit my island. So I kind of have a diary of all the ones that move in and out as I play the game. And then I thought I would do a few of my favorite items and characters as well. So I am doing this fossil. I'm going to have a few videos with these, um, little art pieces, these quick art drawings. So I hope you, you enjoy them. And I just thought it would be something different to do watercolor wise. Um, I found it, it's very difficult during this time of um, being isolated and to be motivated to do art. And it's hard because um, we're still in social distancing and things are starting to open up in my area, but it is really hard to get out. And just like we regularly would and, and have day-to-day -day occurrences, I'm working from home, so I don't see a lot outside of my home <laughs> because I'm home all day working, so I don't have a lot to paint, but I thought this would be really fun. When I'm done these, I'm thinking about offering them as a series of stickers in my Etsy shop as well. Uh, probably just a single pack, or if I get enough villagers, I might just make it an optional thing that you can purchase. So be on the lookout for that as well. If you follow me on Instagram, I do post when, um, or share on there when I post new stickers, usually of my artwork. So if you want to keep up to date, you can follow me over on Instagram at Art. So with this fossil, I have that base layer dry. Um, and now I'm coming in with the detail. So now that it's dry, my paint's not moving around when I bring it in the second time for the second layer. And I can get a bit more detail and clarity and really beef up those really strong edges of this shape and play with the gradients and um, just really emphasize the shadows a bit more. I just love how, um, I'm, as I mentioned, like the shape and the rectilinear and the, the sharp edges. And so I just want to have some fun with some of the colors and stretch or maybe push the boundaries on the colors a little bit on this blue and make it really fun. With the white areas on the fossil, so there's the little swirl on the top and then there's the two little stars on the side. I wanted to do something a little bit more fun with that color and not just doing um, a white with a shadow, but maybe playing with the iridescent colors a little bit. And so that's what I've done with that color, that base color, at least you can see there, I've got uh, some pinks and blues in that white just to add a little bit of interest. And I really like how this is turning out. Now I'm coming in on the shadows and just beefing up those edges. So I'm seeing the light source as being at the top left of the image. And so all the shadows are gonna be hanging out in the bottom right corner of any of the edges or of the object itself. I really want to have some sharp shadow edges here. So with every faucet of the fossil, <laughs> all the Fs, <laughs> every faucet though, I want to start with a high concentration of pigment and then fade it off into a soft fade. And just to give more emphasis on those valleys and, and dips that you see around the edges. With the little stars on the right, I did lose a little bit of detail um, because I tried to add those interesting colors on the white, not just doing the shadows, but adding the pinks and blues. So to bring back some of that detail, I'm just going to really emphasize the shadows around the little stars to hopefully elevate them a little bit more. To ground this piece, I'm going to drop in some shadow around the bottom right. And I'm going to do this for all the pieces on this page, just so they don't look like they're floating uh, in an empty space. And I think the teal is really fun. I'm adding a little uh, phthalo green in here as well, 
just to add a little bit of shadow and a little bit of quinacridone magenta too. Bringing in my gel pen, I'm trying to bring back some of those highlights, especially in those stars that I lost. I have a little bit of trouble with gel pens. They just seem to gum up and they don't flow very nicely. So I am looking for other options for this. Um, but for now, that is what I have. So I'm just using that to add in some more white uh, back into those shapes and then highlights on the top part as well. I have this dot card from Daniel Smith and it has some iridescent colors. So I'm going to bring some of these sparkly colors in as a base, like, or a wash over the base layer or over the, the base of it, I guess. Um, so using some of the iridescent blue and the darker blue, I, there's a lot of variants on that dot card. So I had fun picking out some there. So this is my first Island Villager pinky. And she was one of the first two Islanders I had that came to my island. I have Pinky and I have Coach. So I'm going to paint Pinky first. She is this quirky little bear who wants to be a pop star. And I totally have a soft spot in my heart for her because I used to want to be a singer when I was younger. And so I every time she talks about being a pop star or a superstar, and it's just, it's really cute. So it's pretty fun having her on my island. So I did want to make sure I drew her as well. For doing the application of Pinky, I did her a little bit different or painted her a little bit differently than I did the fossil. So with the fossil, if you remember, I put down a water layer first and flooded in or charged in some different colors to kind of mingle and mix in the water as a base layer. But with Pinky, I'm doing her a little bit different. So I went in for the darker pink areas first and just wet on dry. I didn't start with putting down any water first. And so what this does is allows a more concentrated area of detail and the colors are a little bit more saturated as well. Now for her face area, I did make it more wet and brought in a little bit less pigment so that I could get some blends uh, mostly for the shadows on her face. She's kind of got this cream color base, but I wanted to maybe add some yellows and some warmer tones, a little bit of pinks or oranges in the shadows of her overall uh, face color, that, that white or cream color to make that a little more interesting. With the eyes though, there's a lot of detail. And so I'm just using, uh, again, doing wet on dry and making sure everything's dry when I'm coming in and using more of a liner brush or a detail brush to bring in the little eyes. And it was really hard to make the circles even and round and the same size um, doing this just because the eyes are so pronounced on her. So I needed to make sure that they were proportionate and all that stuff. So that was a little bit of a tricky area to paint, but I think I was able to get it okay. I left the little highlight on the nose too and then doing her cute little mouth. And so I have this liner brush I'm doing for the mouth. And normally the liner brush is good for dragging long strokes. And it, this was a little bit difficult because her mouth has this like curvy up and down shape in a short area. And I didn't want to have the brush drag on me by accident. But the good thing about the liner brush is it does float a lot of pigment in the brush. So you can draw a very long line that has an even weight to it. And luckily I was able to use that and get her little mouth um, added to her face. Now that her base layer of her face is dry, I'm coming in again and this is again doing wet on dry and just beefing up the shadows a little bit, adding a little bit more interest, a little more color, uh, not just doing the plain kind of creamish base, but trying to add some interesting colors into the shadows of that cream color as well. So adding some uh, pinks and oranges and yellows just to make it look a little bit more lively. And then for her, I'm doing the shadow uh, the same way as I did the fossil, just to ground her on the page. And I'm just using uh, the turquoise, I believe this is called uh, teal, uh, cobalt turquoise actually from Windsor and Newton. Now I was adding some shadows into that cobalt turquoise wash and the bottom of her face wasn't dry. So I did have to come in with some paper towel and lift up the bit of color that ran into her face area, but it was okay. I was able to save it. That's what the uh, drawings look like or the sketches and the paintings look like before I add the lines. So now I'm coming in 
with my Lamy pen and I have a waterproof ink that I'm using for this to draw in the detail lines. So the waterproof ink I'm using is by Rower and Klingner and it's in the color Latte or Lot which is just black basically and it's uh, their brand is called is a sketch ink line of ink and so I really like using this in my Lamy pen because it dries really quickly and it doesn't bleed at all like I've had I've tried other brands and um, I always find I have to wait a long time for the ink to dry but this one is actually uh, really quickly to dry and it's great working with uh, the watercolor so I really like this one now I'm using my new Lamy pen this is my Lamy I believe it's called XL and it's in the color Marin and I have a bigger nib on this one so I believe it's a medium and I think just for a drawing this small it felt like my nib was a little bit big for this normally I use a fine nib um, but I just used a lighter hand for doing the outlines and I think it turned out okay but I kind of wish I had used my other Lamy nib that was the fine nib just to get the finer lines when I was doing pinky I was really apprehensive about doing these lines too with this pen because that nib just uh, releases a little bit more ink so it makes more of a bolder line and because these drawings are very uh, tiny I didn't want to overwhelm them with too many hard edge lines like these dark container lines so I did have to be very gentle going over everything I also find too with the paper I'm using so I'm using the Strathmore watercolor travel journal and I find that it is a hundred percent cotton but it's a thirstier paper so especially with these Lamy pens using the fountain pen to put the ink down it just seems to absorb a little bit more ink than I'm used to and so I find that it makes a thicker line as well which is kind of hard when you're trying to do something that's smaller or detailed even though these are meant to be just quick watercolor journals uh, I get I enjoy doing art at smaller sizes so I'm not sure if I really like this book yet I was using the Pentalic aqua journals and they're also 100% cotton but they had more of a stronger structure to the paper where it was more flat and not so thirsty and I believe they've had a supplier problem I've had a hard time finding their journals and I, I found that other artists online are running into the same issue so I'm hoping hoping that they come back and make more because theirs are awesome but in the meantime I am using this one from Strathmore and so I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check it out as well so here's a look at the final two items painted out um, my two Animal Crossing objects I'm so happy with how these turned out I love the sparkles and stuff so I will have some more videos coming but in the meantime if you're playing let me know what villagers are on your island I'd love to hear uh, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you're notified the next time I post more videos to my channel. Thanks so much for watching.